AXA Group. Good evening, I'm Joe Hall. Three American soldiers held captive in Belgrade for a month have arrived in Croatia after being released by Serb authorities. CNN's Brent Sadler filed this report. The three United States soldiers learned of their impending release several hours before disappearance inside a Yugoslav army building. As prisoners, they initially behaved as such, arms behind their back, appearing tense. But President Slobodan Milosevic was delivering his promise to set them free, ordering his army to sign the release papers, putting the U.S. servicemen into the care of the Reverend Jesse Jackson and his delegation of American religious leaders. Emotions began to run high, with tears shed both by the soldiers and those who were at hand to comfort them. One by one, they made brief telephone calls to loved ones. An overwhelming moment of joy. They were not allowed to answer questions, but gave brief statements of thanks for their freedom. Formalities over, the Reverend Jackson steered the proceedings into prayer before leading the men out. But not before he made it clear that world leaders should respond to what he described as a significant gesture by the Yugoslav leader. It is time to use this opportunity to move toward resolution and not toward escalation. After 32 days of captivity, they emerged into the open, squeezed through a media crush and boarded the bus to freedom. Brent Sadler, CNN, Belgrade. Meanwhile, NATO has again been forced to defend its actions in the Balkans after one of its missiles hit a bus packed with civilians. Amid the charred and twisted wreckage, the bodies of dozens of passengers, including, it's claimed, 15 children. NATO admits it set out to destroy this bridge near the Kosovo capital, Pristina, part of a route, it says, used by the Serb army and special police. But when the Allied plane fired, it hit a bus crossing the bridge the impact ripping the vehicle in two. Serbia also claims the site was hit a second time, just as an ambulance arrived. A medical officer was injured. Last month, NATO admitted to accidentally bombing two refugee convoys, killing 64. This followed an attack on a train which killed at least 30. So once again, NATO will be forced to explain why one of its attacks went so tragically wrong. And in the all-important public relations war, such admissions of error can be a severe blow. Lane Kelcutt, National 9 News. Police are questioning a suspect over the London nail bomb attack which killed three people, including a pregnant woman. At the scene of the Soho blast, flowers for those killed by the nail bomb. 24 hours before, the street outside the gay bar was filled with the walking wounded. The bomb was crude, no bigger than a shoebox, plastic explosives packed with nails. Along with the dead, nearly 70 people left injured. Six people remain critically ill. Within hours after the blast, police raided this house south of London. They seized explosives and arrested a man in his 20s. It's not clear if he's the police's prime suspect in the string of three bombings that have terrorised minority groups in the last two weeks. Police have warned people to be vigilant, but here in Soho, just a block away from where the bomb went off, thousands of Londoners are out enjoying themselves. In a city that's used to this kind of terrorism, people are refusing to be intimidated. Mark Burroughs, National 9 News. Treasurer Peter Costello is refusing to commit the government to extra compensation for the poor to win the crucial votes it needs to get the GST through the Senate. If independent senators Brian Harradine and Mal Colston were looking for a signal the government would spend more money on GST compensation, they didn't get it from Treasurer Peter Costello. We are arguing our case, and I think the things that they have raised have answers within the tax package. Addressing Senator Harradine's insistence the tax package doesn't do enough for low-income families, Mr Costello said he'd told the Tasmanian the income tax cuts would give families with two children an extra $15,000 a year. Meanwhile, opposition leader Kim Beasley's denied suggestions Labor's trying to stall the vote on the GST in the belief that Senator Colston's health could fail him. But we have not got some aim of dragging this, this vote out for any, any particular set of, uh, of concerns. David Turnbull, National 9 News. A look at our weather now. Mostly fine in Brisbane, showers in Hobart, but a fine day forecast for the rest of the capitals. And that's the news for now. Good night.
has been a national Nine News presentation.